Professor Clements with you as we continue studying wave optics, chapter 27 of OpenStax College Physics. In this uh, video, we're going to calculate the resolution, the smallest angle at which we can see details. If objects have to be at this angle or further apart than this angle in order to be resolved. So look, taking a look here at the Hubble telescope, it has a diameter of 94.5 inches for the main mirror of the Hubble telescope. We're going to use a wavelength of uh, 500 nanometers and we'll see what we can uh, deduce for this uh, angle of uh, where two objects would be separated, would be resolved. So we know in the uh, Rayleigh criterion that we can calculate this angle from the it turns out to be from the central maximum to the first minimum, but this angle is calculated with theta equals 1.22 lambda over diameter. This capital D is no longer the opening of a uh, slit, but instead it's the diameter. And our theta over here has no sign and function in front of it. This is the angle in radians. That's very important since uh, we've been using degrees lately. But the theta in this formula is in radians. We'll have meters for the wavelength. We'll have meters for the diameter. Those cancel and give us the radian unit. So in this situation, we know the wavelength is 500 nanometers. You can see this is going to be a pretty straightforward calculation. However, the meters here, we need meters for the diameter. So this diameter, we have to convert this into meters. So our diameter would be 94.5 inches. Let's first go to centimeters. We need to calculate, cancel the uh, inches. So I'm going to put inch in the denominator. And we have 2.54 centimeters for one inch. And then we want to convert from centimeters to meters. So I have centimeters in the numerator here. I need centimeters in the denominator in this conversion factor. So the inches cancel, the centimeters cancel. You should do this on your calculator. But I came up with 2.4 meters. And now I have a number to use in this calculation for the diameter doing the Rayleigh criterion calculation. Again, you should pause, do your own calculation here. Welcome back. 2.54 times 10 to the minus 7 radians. And you may not be too familiar with the radian. What does that mean in degrees? To convert this into degrees, we need a conversion factor that gets rid of radians. So 360 degrees would be 2 pi radians. Once around the circle is 2 pi. Once around the circle is 360 degrees. And you can use a simplified version of this. 180 degrees is 1 pi radians. And in doing that, I came up 1.46 to the minus 5 degrees. Essentially 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 degrees. That's pretty close together. That is the uh, if two objects are this angle apart or further, the Hubble telescope can see them as distinct objects. Not so with our eye. Our eye has a circular opening in the pupil. And when it's dark outside, uh, kind of a rough average would be about 8 millimeters for the, uh, for the diameter. Well, we do the same formula. Theta is 1.22 lambda over d. I'm using the same wavelength, 1.22, then 500 times 7 minus 9 meters. Don't have to do quite as much conversion here, 8 millimeters. I bring in 10 to the minus 3 for the milli. Again, you should pause and do this calculation. 7.62 times 10 to the minus 5 radians. And again, let's convert this into degrees. So I'm going to use the other version here, 180 degrees over pi radians. The radians would cancel. And 
I come up with an angle of 4.37 times 10 to the minus 3 degrees. So how do these two telescope, well, how do these two optical devices compare? The resolution of the Hubble telescope compared to the resolution for your eye. Well, I divide these two numbers, and I'm going to take the uh, 4.37 times 10 to the minus 3, that's for the eye, divided by the uh, minimum angle of separation used for objects viewed with the Hubble telescope, 1.46 times 10 to the minus 5, and what you find is essentially 300. So objects can be 300 times closer together on the sky and be resolved with the Hubble telescope compared to the eye. Or another way to say it, if we're working at the limit of the Hubble telescope to see objects separated with our eye, those objects have to be 300 times further apart. Now, let's move down to the Earth here, and using a telescope on the Earth, um, let's suppose that we're looking, it's, we're looking through air, and we can see that two stars are distinct stars when they're three arc seconds from each other. This three arc seconds is essentially an average value for the twinkling of our sky. Our atmosphere is unsteady. There are millions upon millions of little lenses, air pockets of different density in our atmosphere. And that shifts the beam of starlight around and blurs the image to about three arc seconds. So our two objects would have to be about three arc seconds apart to be seen clearly. So I'm giving you the theta number now, three arc seconds. Well, we need to do a little conversion because we need theta in radians. So first we can convert to arc minutes by bringing in 60 arc seconds. It works just like a clock. 60 arc seconds is one arc minute. I'm headed towards degrees now. There are 60 arc minutes in one degree. And again, there are pi radians in 180 degrees. So arc seconds have canceled, arc minutes have canceled, degrees have canceled. And when I uh, put this through my calculator, um, I have a theta of 1.45 times 10 to the minus 5 radians. So 1.45, 10 to the minus 5 radians. Again, we're going to assume we're using uh, this 500 nanometer light. And now we can use you know, theta is 1.22 lambda over d. We're trying to find d, so cross multiply 1.22 lambda over theta. We can calculate the diameter of this telescope. Uh, we have the numbers necessary, so let's go ahead and do the calculation. 1.22, the lambda is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Our angle 1.45 times 10 to the minus 5 radians. So this diameter is 4.19 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. And again, English people are at a disadvantage in knowing what that really means. Um, let's first go to centimeters, 4.19 centimeters. Uh, going from meters to centimeters involves uh, 10 to the minus 2. Um, then let's convert to inches. So we would do that with, of course, one inch, 2.54 centimeters. And what I came up with, the diameter here, 1.65 inches. 1.65 inches. Um, you are not going to be able to see better details by buying a big telescope on the Earth if you cannot get to a place where the twinkling factor is less than three arc seconds. Um, so if you can get to a mountaintop and still air, then it's worth getting a bigger telescope in order to see details. And generally, it's worth getting a big telescope, big diameter, in order to see dim objects. That's the primary advantage for a telescope. Okay, last question here. What color of light will give the best resolving power for a microscope?
we want to get the smallest theta that we can in order to resolve small details. If we have a fixed diameter for the microscope. What wavelength of light should we use? What color of light? Well, if we want a small theta, we need to use a small wavelength. And that would be the blue end of the spectrum. So sometimes you'll see microscopes outfitted with a blue light to illuminate uh, whatever is being examined with this short wavelength light. You can see the details a little bit clearer if you use blue light rather than yellow or red light. So our prime uh, discussion here, resolving power, the angle that the objects have to be separated is calculated with 1.22 lambda over d. This 1.2 comes from the shape of the opening being a circle rather than a rectangular slit. Um, wavelength of the light, diameter of the opening, radians, must use radians for the theta. So keep practicing, ask your instructor some questions.